morning. In our section today, we're going to share four conclusions. First, in this world of ours, there are some things which never change. They always remain. Second, those things are the good questions. Third, since good questions are eternal, they are more important than answers. And fourth and finally, if we wish to find great questions, which will last forever, we should, as Zuckerberg did, read the record, which remains today as actual as ever. And thus, our title is Drucker Questions Are Eternal. But how can that be? After all, we are so full of stories about change. For instance, when Lincoln was elected president to calm down his friends, he told them the story about the ancient king who called his advisors and said, go, think, and come back with one universal truth. One thing. When they returned, they said, the only thing which is constant is that everything passes away. The universe is change. And that applies to people, small businesses, even to large corporations that, as we all know, sometimes have strong advantages in terms of lower costs because of economies of scale and greater financial power for price and promotion wars. However, in spite of these advantages, when we compare the giants of today with those of the beginning of the millennium, only two thirds are the same. Compared with the 90s, only how far the same. And compared with the 80s, only one fourth are the same. Three in four giants are different. And so, since only change is constant, as through history, scientists, religious leaders, poets, statesmen have pointed out, two conclusions follow. First, if we keep on doing what worked in the past, we are going to fail. And second, to change is to improve, to change often, is perfection. Because every single day brings new information and a new reality. And thus, the first Drucker question, the first question that Drucker used to ask managers was, if we were to decide to now, would we still enter into the businesses we are in today? If and if the answer is not, what are we going to do about that? Take Kimberly Clark. A 20 billion sales, one and a half billion income corporation. Great company, right? Well, it wasn't always so. Born in 1872, it was a mediocre company for one century until the 1970s, when Smith, an extremely unassuming man, very shy, became president and asked the director question. If I was to decide today, what kind of Kimberly Clark would I build? And his answer was, I would not be in the paper mills and coated paper businesses, I would be only in consumer products. And so, 
He sold everything outside consumer products, invested the raised money in Kleenex and Huggies, and very soon was having 50% market shares and outperforming the market by more than four times. What leads us to three conclusions. First, nobody can afford the luxury of copying the past. Second, the only way for an institution to maintain continuity is by building systematic innovation in its structure. And third, since resources are scarce, the first step to innovate, to grow, is to decide what to divest today. Even if in some businesses we are not losing money. But if some businesses are less profitable than others. Let's say I buy two pieces of land. A few years down the road, I know that one piece of land is less fertile than the other. My resources are scarce. I don't have enough time and seeds to plant both. Question, why should I plant the less fertile piece of land? Why water the wine? And then, of course, that planned abandonment that is to sacrifice what we are to what we can be applies as much to strategy and businesses as to the internal parts of the organizations, the departments, the programs, the task forces, the rules. In the two years after his return to Apple, Jobs took the company out of 350 programs into 10. Why? Because Jobs' role model was Gretzky, who attributed his success to ice skate to where the puck is going to be, nor to what it has been. And Jobs added in an interview, that's what I have always tried to do at Apple, and all is will. In short, If we were to decide now, would we still be making the things that we are today? What do I have to abandon to create room for tomorrow? Before asking myself, am I doing things right? I should ask myself, am I doing the right things? Because, ladies and gentlemen, first things first, second things never. And therefore, <laughs> planned abandonment is like trimming a tree so that the tree can grow. Now, if planned abandonment has to do with abandoning the past, another Drucker question, focus on the present, and ask, who is the client? With the objective of finding a type of client which weights more in my portfolio than in society in general, does that type of client has selected me? Does I make sense to him or to her? Therefore, it's easier to grow by attracting more of the same. Something, of course, which must be done with utmost care, as in life, small things make a great difference. And so, when we are defining who is the client, we should add as many variables as possible, age, sex, phase of life cycle, etc., as long as they are healthy. Take the color wars. At a certain stage, Coke was selling five times Pepsi. It was almost an icon. What did Pepsi do? It looked at its portfolio of sales and found out that in its portfolio, teenagers represented a far greater percentage than in society in general. Why? 
Well, let me ask you. Why do grandparents and grandchildren get, get along so well? Answer, they share a common enemy. <laughs> that, that is, for many teenagers, there are two types of opinion in this world. Those of the parents and the right ones. And so, if the parents are drinking Coke, they should be drinking something else. And therefore, Pepsi, focused on the teenagers, launched a campaign which was a huge success called the Pepsi Generation Campaign, mm -hmm. and which improved its sales relative to Coke by three times. Then, by defining who is our client, comes the second advantage. We become aware of who is the non-client. Only by knowing the yeses do we know the noes. And the non-clients always outnumber the clients. And so, the third record question is, who is the non-client? And Mr. Non-Client, why aren't you buying from us? Although Gillette dominated the Indian market for long, it found out that its client basis was only the urban, middle to upper social classes. One third of the Indian population. Why weren't the other two thirds, rural and lower social classes, buying? Well, they couldn't afford the razor, the blade, the cream, they didn't even have honey water. So, what did Gillette do? To serve its non-clients, launched a new blade called Gart, cheaper, although less comfortable, but which required neither cream nor running water, just a cup of water. And increased its market share to 94%, 12 points in five years. Who is the non-client? And Mrs. Non-Client, why don't you buy from us? Fine, we know who is the non-client and we know who is the client. But what is value for the client? Now, to answer this well, since frequently clients are very shy to talk about their needs or not even aware of them, we must scratch beneath the surface, make a deep plunge to find untapped needs which will allow to differentiate our offering from competition. And that is, what some tour operators did in tourism, and thus created the getaway from it all niche, where people do not want to see anything. On the contrary, they just not want to be seen. As for weeks in a row, their working clothes are shorts and slippers. Then other travel agencies found out that for other clients, value is what they can brag about. Tell after others afterwards. It's the status segment. Then, still for other clients, value is not what they see, not not to be seen, not what they can crow about, but who else goes? It's the old widow's niche, which use travel to meet other old ladies, make friends with other old ladies, or to increase the bonds with their grandchildren. Socialize, meet new people, bring your granddaughters to Paris, to tango lessons in Buenos Aires. And then, of course, there is the bozo segment, which is going far beyond adventure, simple things like safaris and so, that's for sissies, includes very relaxing holidays, such as a Sahara Marathon, 140 miles, six days, only self-sufficient water 
in the back and under 122 Fahrenheit degrees. Fantastic. <laughs> now, you are a beginner? No problem. Explore Worldwide Agency, which has more than 30 clients, 30,000 clients, and the market growth of 15%, offers you the possibility of spending two weeks in these fantastic installations <laughs> eh? without anything, all by yourself. Bathroom not included, of course. <laughs> then, by defining who is the, what is value for the client, we became aware of another very important record question. What is non-value for the client? The parts of the product where we can save money because the client does not care about them. Curves is a gymnasium only for women, as it found out that many women did not care for uh, saunas, sophisticated machinery, Turkish baths, pools, and most especially, did not want men around looking at them. Okay? <laughs> Get men out. Okay? And so, Curves, with great success, created a network of small, non-expensive neighborhood gymnasiums with simple machinery organized in a circle. There are, of course, ladies and gentlemen, other very interesting Drucker questions, but it's time to conclude by stressing five points. In the movie Leopard, the Prince of Selina, played by Bert Lancaster, tries in 19th century Italy to maintain its preeminence in a time of great political, social, economic changes. And at a certain point, he complains to his nephew, Tancredi, played by Alain Delon, a French actor, we were the leopards, the lions, and those who are about to replace us are nothing but shackles and sheep. To which the nephew, who had recently married the daughter of a very wealthy shopkeeper, answered, Uncle, if we want that things stay as they are, things will have to change. And that is the first point of the five I will share with you in the conclusion. Since only change is constant, if we keep on doing what succeeded in the past, we are going to fail. Therefore, we must adapt. But, and this is the second point, how to adapt, what to do? And it is here precisely that questions enter by providing us with guidelines towards useful actions. Where do I have to abandon today to save scarce resources and invest in the most promising areas? Who is my client? Who is the non-client? What is value for my client? What is non-value? And so on. But caution. In order to get useful actions, we must ask the right questions. Not the wrong ones. Not should I get the prices to increase market share before assessing which businesses would invest to save scarce resources for the most profitable ones? Not should I enlarge the distribution channels before defining who is the client and which distribution channels does she or he frequent? Not should I increase advertising before I'm making sure that my present campaign is focusing on it, what is the core value for the client. not in which sections to cut prices before asking myself 
what is non-value for the client and where you can save money without hurting sales. And so, we can all see now three things. First, that while answers change are temporary, questions are permanent, eternal. Second, that questions are more important than answers. Not only by, because they remain, but also because they guide us to useful actions. And so, as has been said, judge a man by his questions, not by his answers. And that is precisely why, ladies and gentlemen, we should read Drucker for the quality of his questions. As this gentleman said when he was asked, what do you read in management? And he immediately answered, Drucker, of course. And then, after considerable time and effort, he added, and, and, and. To leave you in a positive tone, what I'm bringing to you is good news. In this world of change, there is, after all, something we can hold to. Not only because of the eternal brings security, but also because it's useful. Those things we can, in a world of change, hold to are the good questions. Because, as has been said, ask a good question and you immediately get half the answer. Thank you for your interest.